Okay, so I'm going to start this video by saying that not all of you are going to believe anything I say, and that's fine. I just don't want any hate. If you don't believe it, just move on. Please watch the whole video to, to decide what you think before saying anything silly to me. I also want everyone to go and get decent headphones to listen to some of the footage that I'm going to be referencing in this video. Um, I'm not going to be using anybody else's footage, but I am going to reference some. Um, I'm also going to say that I 100% believe that Brian Koberg is not a killer of anybody or anything. I think he is completely innocent. And you'll realise as I'm going through this video why I think that. Um, we've all had a lot of information. We've all had all the information, in fact. But most of us are looking at this through, um, like for me, a, a mother's eyes. I have five children. Two of my children are roughly the same age as the victims. Uh, and I struggled. I struggled to see and put all the information together because I was looking at it from a parent's point of view. And with this case, you cannot do that. You just can't. Um, this video is not intended to upset anybody. It's not intended to get to anybody. This, this video is for the victims and for the victims' families. And I'm not going to release everything I know. I'm not going to release everything that I found out. Um, because I, I, I think it would, it would do the opposite to what I want. Um, I think we need to keep some integrity with this and let justice play out. I want to start by saying the missing five hours is so important. It's everything. The, the missing five hours is when this all started. I believe that Ethan and Zana were taken from Sigma Chi. Possibly Ethan was drugged to make him easier to handle. I believe they were taken to Linda Lane in one of the apartments there and they were locked in and if you go to Jeff H with the T-Rev show, Jeff H has his channel. He has done some great work on the audio for Linda Lane. He's cleaned it up lovely. You can hear a lot more on his audio. He's took a lot of the white noise out, you know. Um, so I want to say thank you to Jeff because it's cleared a lot of things up for me. A car shows up at Linda Lane. In fact, like a jeep or something turns up at Linda Lane at 12.27. Four people get out of that jeep. The first guy walks to the apartment and he hides his face with his hat. As they're walking up, you can hear lots of banging. Uh, it's been bothering me. And when the first guy walks up, he bangs on the door as if to say, shut the fuck up, you know. And it just bothered me. That really bothered me. So, the next people that walk up start saying things like, oh, you're scared. and I've told her to go and park down there. And, 
just after, just as the car is turning to leave, you hear somebody shout, as the people go up the stairs, you hear somebody shout, what the fuck, as those people enter the apartment. I believe that was Zana. Um, I believe that Ethan was tortured to try and make Zana talk. And I'm sorry this is so graphic, and but it's... It's what happened. Um, the times are so important, guys. Whoever did this, Tizana and Ethan, waited in the house for the girls to arrive back home. I'm not sure if the girls were attacked and killed in the 1122, or whether they were also taken to Linda Lane. I don't know. But it would explain why the house was so clean, why there was no blood trails, no footprints, no, no anything. Um, the way that Ethan and Zana were dumped in their, Zana's bedroom and the way Kaylee and Maddie were just dumped on top of each other in Maddie's room. That's the stuff that doesn't make sense. That's the stuff. If they were killed in the house, why were they not just left in the house where they were killed? I believe Ethan was tortured and I believe Kaylee was tortured. And I think Kaylee's torture was caused from somebody who was very, very jealous. Yeah. Somebody very cold and very jealous. I believe that Maddie was stabbed to try and make her talk. I also believe that for the couple of hours that the girls were at the corner club I believe Maddie was far too intoxicated to have drunk that much in that short amount of time I I just believe that's kind of where we're at. I don't want to say any names or I am going to speak about some names that we already know about. Um, I believe that Jack D was called multiple times as, as a part of his alibi to cover his alibi. I believe that Adam wasn't working that night at the corner club. We know that Zana hosted a lot of parties for people. And I think we all know what that means. We need to remember we're not dealing with kids. We need to forget that we're parents. And we need to look at this from an outside point of view. These were not children. These were young adults, and no matter what they did, they did not deserve any of what they got. My main point is the only thing that makes sense here, and why the crime scene was so clean, and why there's five missing hours. I really, really don't want to mention certain people's names, but... J.S. I 100% believe he was there to make sure the girls got home. But not for the reasons that we're all being told. He wasn't there to make sure they got home safe. He was there to make sure they got home. 
Ay. I believe a lot of people were involved in this. And a lot more people know about it. And I understand why people don't want to speak about it. I understand people don't want to be involved. But these young adults were slaughtered. Their families were left in pieces. Idaho, whole communities left broken from this. I have so much more things to talk about. I have time stamps way back in March, February time from when I started researching properly. I just needed to put everything together. If you watch any of the coroner's interviews, Kathy, then you'll realise that every single thing she said, every single thing she said, you need to reverse. Okay. It's utterly heartbreaking. I can't imagine and that's the problem none of us can imagine and it makes us not want to believe anything I'm not going to say too much else at the moment but when this trial gets stopped and Brian Koberger gets found innocent I'm willing to release more stuff. I'm willing to put myself out there a little bit more. But at the moment, it's... I believe in justice. I want justice for these young people. Whatever they done, it doesn't matter what they did. They did not deserve this. Their families did not deserve this. These weren't kids, these were young adults, and I hope all the people involved in this get the karma they deserve. I believe that the majority of the police involved are innocent of any wrongdoing. I think they I really do think they're trying to find the truth. And I believe they found the truth quite early on. And I believe this whole thing with Brian Koberger is a cover for the real investigation. I think it's to keep us all busy. I think Brian Koberger has been looked after. He looks good. 